Hello again, it's Andrew from Red Circle Pottery. I recently took on a new project making a dragon's egg on the pottery wheel and want to share that process with you today. Uh, this will be a two-part series where I show the wheel throwing and trimming in part one and then we'll do the patterning and glazing in part two. So if you're looking forward to seeing it finished, uh, subscribe so you can be notified once it's finished and uh, see how it turns out. We have a gold glaze that's going to look amazing on this piece and it really loves to move around the textures on pottery. And we also built a brand new kiln and after a few firings the reduction has been really amazing and so with reduction uh, it's atmospheric firing uh, because how it affects the glaze uh, that's certainly a topic for another video but uh, to say the least we're really excited to uh, be able to put that on this piece and I'm, I'm thinking it's going to turn out really good so I'm excited to, to see that in the end. This video is going to be a guided tour of the process and how I made it, what my thought process was during each step. Uh, if you're learning pottery, there may be some useful tips here and some ideas that you can apply to your own practice. So as I've been talking, we've kind of skipped over some of the video where you've seen me do some wedging and basically getting it ready for the wheel. And so now here I am on the wheel, um, sort of skipped all I'll pass that. Uh, I'm assuming if you're to this point and you're getting ready to throw, you kind of you already know how to do those other steps. So uh, right now I'm really just kind of getting into getting this clay worked up and getting it uh, centered and getting it to the point where now I can start to pull up that wall and start to get it going up. So overall, this is a pretty straightforward shape. I mean, the, the difference in making an egg versus something like a vase is really you're just accounting for some extra clay at the top so that way you can ultimately close it up when we're done. So a big part of this step of pulling up the walls is really just taking your time, being really slow, methodical, making sure that your passes are really even. Um, the better you do here, the less trouble you're going to have when you get to the lip. So what I find is that when you have mistakes in your, it really goes for any kind of throwing, when you have mistakes in there, they typically become compounded uh, and amplified the closer they get to the top of the rim. So if I have an air bubble in there or some sort of wobble, it's not going to be in the rest of the pot. It's mostly going to be in the lip. And so uh, that stuff comes out as you're pulling up and sort of gets pushed into the lip. So uh, the better job you do here, the better off you're going to be once you get towards that end process of closing it up. And so we're still just kind of taking care to collar this in a little bit. So when I pull, things tend to get a little wider. You know, you stick your hands in there and they get wide. So you're just taking your time to kind of narrow it back up. You can start to see that wobble happen a little bit. So there, there's definitely some imperfection in this piece, but again, you can sort there's some ways of dealing with that. And you'll get a chance to see that one coming up when I'm able to get the needle tool out and take part of that top off. So with most big pieces, you know, typically you're looking at uh, getting your cylinder to go completely vertical. And this is a standard process for whether it's a vase or any type of shape, uh, you know, a pitcher, something along those lines. Uh, you always start with a, a tall cylinder. And then once you go from the tall cylinder, then you can start to actually put a belly or some contour to it. And that's what you're starting to see now is where I'm starting to pull that belly out just a little bit. But also because this is going to be a sealed piece, we're going to take care to leave some extra clay at the top that I actually can collar it. And if I don't leave myself any clay there, then I don't have the ability to sort of collar it in and bring all that clay to the center. So you need to account for that. So you need to leave it a little top heavy maybe and make sure that there's enough clay to work with. So really what we're going to do is we're going to finish up the bottom half of the pot for the most part. Here I'm using a rib to really work on that contour and make sure that I'm getting the shape that I want that's going to be really that perfect egg shape. And you can see that top probably quarter to a third is 
what's going to be the, the rest of the egg that ends up getting closed in. And just taking care to use that rib and just keep keep making it perfect and that's what's going to give you your best shape is spending all your time really perfecting that outside edge and having the perfect contour This is always a fun tool to use, the torch. It's really important to torch pieces when you're working on large forms because you really need the structure and sort of strength to be there. So by using the torch on the lower portion of the pot, I can dry it out a little bit, make it a bit stronger. So that way when I'm putting some forces into the top of the pot, I don't find that the bottom is gonna buckle and cave in or twist on me. So I wanna make sure that there's just enough uh, moisture removed that it's a lot stronger. If you Taking a piece of soft clay versus leather hard, you'll notice that the leather hard is just significantly stronger than a soft piece of clay. And that's what we're after when I dry that out. So now you can see that I'm starting to work on the top of the pot and I don't have to worry about the bottom. And you can see that wobble that we were talking about earlier is really starting to become pronounced and that's okay uh, there's definitely kind of some cheats that we can use using a needle tool to cut this off so once i get to that point i'm going to work that clay up a little higher because i need to thin it out a bit so that way i can get it when i collar it in and have it collapse on itself that it's able to touch and here you see me use that needle tool to just trim away some of that wobble in the pot and now it's pretty even. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. So here we just keep taking our time using a sponge. We're just doing a little bit of pulling, a little bit of shaping, a little bit of collaring it in, just slowly but surely collapsing it inwards. And then just as you, so one thing that happens is you collar it in, it also tends to get thicker. Um, that's the clay particle. I mean, they start to build up and so you have to thin them out. So you collar and thin it out and then collar. So you'll see that there's a little bit of pulling that goes between each of those collaring steps as we come inwards where we thin out the clay and then it comes inwards. We're pretty close now and we're just going to do some, still doing some pulling and shaping and just kind of keep working towards that center. So here we're at the finish line and we just are about there. Uh, we're just going to take a rib tool and we're going to just slowly start to collapse that until the uh, sort of that internal ring touches. And then once it touches, it's sealed up and then uh, that air can't escape and go anywhere. So now we can just kind of contour and finish everything out and really just work on it. And just like we did at the bottom, we're going to torch it just to get just a little bit drier and stronger and that's going to allow us to take the rib tool and then just finish that contour and really make it look perfect. And it does get pretty hot. Sometimes it's going to be too hot to touch so you have to leave it for a few minutes. But then once you're ready and it cools just a little bit then you can go ahead and start just sort of finishing that contour. Now we're pretty much at the finishing touch. We're just going to wet it just a little bit and we're just going to basically burnish the outside edge so it's just a really perfect surface.
And last but not least, we're going to take away just a little bit of the clay at the bottom from when we were throwing. There's enough material down here that we can do a little bit of shaping just from doing some trimming. And then ultimately we're going to take this to the trimming wheel and then we're going to finish off this bottom edge. Unfortunately, I was working on the trimming and I had already done a bunch of trimming and I had forgot to turn on the camera. So here I'm just kind of going over. You can uh, sort of visualize here with the egg and the chuck that uh, there would have been a little bit more clay there. And really it's just kind of removing it and again, kind of finishing off that perfect contour that I want to get to. And that's what I'm after. So I'm um, just kind of doing a little trimming here on the bottom. I guess this is technically the top. And then I just flip it over and then I'll do a little bit more trimming just to make sure everything's perfect. Now I'm turning it over and I'm placing it in the chuck so I can go ahead and just just kind of touch up the other side. Uh, putting it in the chuck leaves a few marks, so I just want to clean those up just a little bit. And there's just a little bit of fussing that you have to do to kind of get it perfectly centered and kind of just keep working on it until you get it. And we're pretty much there. This is it. This is the end of the process of part one where we're just kind of finishing it up, making it a perfect egg shape, and we pretty much accomplished that. So uh, our next steps are going to just be to let this dry a little bit, and then I'll move on to part two where uh, go ahead and do a little patterning and, and fire this. <laughs> 